entertainment that you may or may not in, in, in enjoy. So I did send you a little script uh, that uh, um, I admit it's too late. It, it would be timely a week or two weeks ago. So it's related to previous homework, but uh, it shows that uh, I think there were complaints that full year uh, series are not natural concept. You don't need to say yes or no, the, the one who uh, made this comment, but uh, this uh, little script that I'm going to demonstrate is uh, mm, an alternative way for the um, expansion of the step function in the Fourier transform. So uh, there are attempts to take the step function integrated with uh, sines and cosines uh, numerically find expansion coefficients and then by adding together uh, expansion uh, coefficients reconstruct the function so the result of the script gives this image and shows that by adding together several oscillatory functions one can reconstruct uh, the step function as an example and generally there are mathematical theorems that uh, with sufficient basis and correct uh, selection of expansion coefficients one can reconstruct any function so uh, the final part of this uh, code looks this way. So uh, in the W function, we will see this uh, orange line we will accumulate there and we go with a running index uh, in each cycle we assign to this uh, cc and ss variable the oscillatory function which will be will have more and more denser fringes depending on the value of this running index right right so sines and cosines with more and more frequent oscillations. And then we have the expression, expansion coefficient A for cosines, expression, expansion coefficient B for sines. And then they are ed added together again and again for each K. And then uh, when this part is uh, completed, one plots the original function, which is this blue dashes uh, step and the actual result of this Fourier expansion. So if one uh, runs this uh, script, So it shows, it illustrates that uh, one needs to perform integration only within one period of this repeating function. And actually integration in the range where the function is uh, zero is not needed. So basically we need to explore overlaps of the uh, basis functions with our function of interest only in this half period range. And uh, here, one is looking the overlaps with cosine so po positive and negative compensate each other and the uh, expansion coefficient will be zero right so if you go further next cosine it's also like positive and negative uh, together adding together and provide zero and if you look for next and next cosine, uh, they all uh, contribute zero, right? And uh, we stop this escalation early enough before we get bored. Although someone can get bored even before starting. Uh, and then we go for science. So in this range, 
the uh, everything is positive. So the expansion coefficients will be corresponding to this black uh, area. So it will be something bigger than zero and less than one, something positive. If we go to the next sign, which uh, has even number of this of these fringes, then it will be the same story as, as cosines, positive and negative will compensate each other. And you remember from your pen and paper solutions that uh, signs were alternating, right? Uh, all, all, all cosines were zero coefficients and signs half were zero and half were not. If you go next, you see uh, two of them compensate each other and one protrudes and give uh, non-zero contribution, but definitely it is smaller than contribution from the first non-zero term. So when we go higher in the uh, series, the uh, next term will be smaller than the previous one. Then when I go to the next term, it will be compensating zero again. And then again, five things, uh, three positive, two negative, they're equal by the value opposite by sign. So the only last one will be uh, not compensated. And you see, as we escalate further into the higher order functions, the expansion coefficient will be smaller and contributing less to the series. And this property that more senior term is contributed with smaller proportion gives us a right to stop series uh, with few terms. So there is no uh, reason to go to like term number 100 if you know that they will be decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Now uh, we go over this uh, cycle and add all the terms of the first order. So the, uh, we uh, shift everything by uh, zeros order term that we found before. And then the first order correctly reproduces patterns with uh, of this uh, steps, but it is more round shape rather than the showing edges. And if you go to the next uh, <clears throat> term, it adds together a little bit uh, of the more quickly oscillating thing, and it stays on the pattern to uh, reproduce this uh, rectangular shape more more precisely. And uh, by following this path, one can approximate the original function better and better. So uh, I don't know if you found this entertaining and helpful to your presentations or as a little story that uh, puts you asleep. <laughs> so um, you may or may not run, run the script if you find it useful for your um, presentations. So keep working on presentations. I'll, I'll find another entertainment and uh, we'll ask, we'll make circle just checking how your things are uh, going towards your main uh, towards your personal presentations. And maybe this stuff can next year can go earlier as a demonstration towards homework too.
So who has selected the very last presentation on the movies? Okay, so uh, the next thing uh, will be Nate will be primary client. So uh, he's not online and not here, but probably he will watch the recording. So Nate, if you're watching these recordings, uh, please start focusing right now. I will show a demonstration for everyone that will be related to the uh, homework three, uh, problem five that we all uh, just completed and graded today. But uh, uh, Nate can elect to add component of converting this uh, script into into movie, which uh, will be helpful for for class and will be will make his presentation well. So. Um, I will entertain you with another demonstration and uh, you can either run the script for your entertainment or just keep working on, on your on your pr uh, presentations.
Okay, let me attract your attention. And uh, probably there will be nothing, whether you listen to me or not, uh, it will not affect your uh, well being in the course. If, if I would do it um, on previous week, it could be related to the homework screen. Now it is maybe entertainment and preparation for the next uh, chapter. So um, I'm going to have a second look on uh, homework three, problem five. So the answer that uh, you have obtained and graded each other for it is uh, normalization factor and then alpha X where alpha uh, equals to Y and then natural any, uh, any integer number, right? Which means by selecting this solution, your uh, function will match these points for x equal uh, zero and x equals L. Now, uh, let's think uh, what should we do if we are not as smart, if we never completed high school, if we do not know what is sine function. Right, we just know, we know how to plot sign and we know where it intersects. What should we do in more more general case? So, in in some sense, we need to explore all possible values of uh, alpha and look when our trial function sine alpha l will be equal to zero. Right. So, if alpha equals uh, zero pi over L, two pi over L, three uh, pi over L, then it will be zero, right? Suppose we, do, we, we, we suppose I do not know how to plot sine function. So I need to think algorithmically how to solve this equation in, in more general case. What if this, uh, I can only modify this parameter and make uh, just explore one value. So um, I would need to scan through all values of uh, alpha. And by uh, taking a value of alpha, I should check whether the result of this function will fit into this little stripe if it will be close to vicinity of, of zero or away. Make sense? Or if I'm speaking on the language of, if I still know how to plot sine function, I can, uh, they always start at zero. And then by changing alpha, I am changing the density of fringes. So I can make like a uh, Canon projectile, whether it, it will fall into L, fall, a little earlier or fall into the right position, right? So uh, I'm just playing artillery game uh, by shutting at some angle and uh, looking to, to, catch the, to catch the target. But this target can be caught several times. Once when uh, it goes on the one trajectory and there will be another solution when it go up and down and then come here. Right? And then it will be continuous. So uh, we can design a procedure where we carefully screen all values of, of alpha and then identify whether the, uh, it will catch the value of L plus minus some tolerance. Make sense? So uh, if you hear such ideas for the first time, it may sound unnatural or not uh, pleasant compared to regular type of solution. But uh, uh, in the future, if we will uh, have the unsolvable problems, we always need to design tricks because sometimes there are barriers that uh, not lack of training or ignorance. It's just not, some problems are not available for today's math and one tries to find uh, bypasses. So shooting at arbitrary 
parameter alpha and trying to get to the to the destination. So let me now bring your attention to this code that I uh, also shared with uh, everyone. So this little script, which probably is, is named as homework three, problem five, um, sets grid points and then makes a cycle uh, over, over this uh, range and then set, sets up the parameter K, which in some sense is, uh, well, it, it is the same as, uh, as alpha. I was just doing it at a different year, so different time of, of the day. So basically it is alpha. And then we are setting up the uh, sign of this alpha L. So we screen different values of, of alpha, and then we, uh, the variable criterion is, uh, something that we should find matching the value zero. But since we are doing things numerically, we cannot uh, demand that it will be literally equal to, uh, to our desired value. So one can set up the tolerance range. So some pre predefined small value. And if our, um, it's like a size of the target if you are shooting gun in, into the into the target so if you are your your accuracy of, of the shot is smaller than the size of the target then then you achieve the goal so then this script uh, does two illustrations so one um it puts all attempts in yellow so it will be pale and not, not visible the letter y stands for yellow and uh then one makes uh who is presenting programming not anyone in uh, who is presenting programming uh, scripts in matlab let, let me check just for, for a second. Uh, Wyatt, yes, it's you. So, what safe run if cycle? So, if is your territory. Uh, you're expected to teach everyone. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, then we can compare if this criterion was smaller than tolerance. And if this criterion is met, we can uh, like say hallelujah or just play trumpet or just print, put it in different color, like K stands for uh, black. And then we will uh, see yellow values of alpha were unsuccessful attempts and black will be successful. And then we keep uh, keep escalating, keep expanding through different values of alpha, which are uh, named K in, in the script. Uh, plot success in black. And then uh, as a result, we will see all attempts successful and uh, unsuccessful. And those values that did provide the um, correct, the successful values will be solutions that we, that we found by hand uh, in, the, in the homework. So let's uh, see how it will look in, in, in running. So when this parameter uh, alpha or what is called k here is uh, zero it will be a trivial solution with uh, norm not defined it will be just parallel to x-axis now uh, it's a sign with very very shallow uh, period so it will go to zero and infinity it doesn't uh, formally our algorithm will bring it into successful solution but uh, it's just the shortcoming of the of the wrong uh, approach of the wrong now 
we keep uh, going into bigger and bigger um, values of alpha. Do you see the yellow lines? Okay. And the next time our projectile will land, next time it will intersect X, is still very far from our window of observation. But as we keep uh, going forward, you'll see that there will be a turning point. So now we see that it will, it will land uh, quite close. And if we will match uh, our project out to, uh, into this target, it should be seen back uh, in black. So this is the solution. This is a half period of sign, which uh, so this uh, it, it's uh, illustration of going from um, general solution to particular, right? So particular solution that approximately matches this initial condition. Since it is numerical approach with certain tolerance, it will show uh, several solutions in the range. But if we will set tolerance smaller, we can get only one solution uh, in, in, in the given range of alpha. And then we can get higher values of alpha and uh, we will have the sine function going up and down and then it will intersect x axis for the second time, but yet it is far from our target uh, position. If we keep increasing this uh, alpha, it will match the solution and, and uh, give uh, another situation when general solution turns into particular because it, it uh, agrees with uh, boundary conditions. And then one can uh, keep going and maybe the code, yeah, will give the third, uh, third solution. And uh, this little illustration is, is nothing but uh, uh, our high school approach knowing that uh, sine equals zero when its argument is proportional to pi times natural number. So for, for specific problem, we, we know how to solve it, but this general approach can be applied in situations when our high school math doesn't, doesn't help. So if your name is Nate, please try to add the module for converting the script into generation of movie so that uh, one can upload it in YouTube and uh, play in class on Monday or you, uh, Nate, you can play it as a part of your presentation if you want. Um, I think it is enough for, for um, entertainment. I, I will visit one by one uh, each one about your uh, presentations and we'll provide feedback. So first, those who are in class, second, those who are online. And then if time remains and uh, you guys do not want to leave, I will uh, do the Nate's assignment uh, and uh, add a video module to the script that will make it more, more spectacular, but it's like an option for extra time. Uh, Adam and Ellison, I, I think it will take me at least five minutes per visit, so uh, I will uh, try to attract your attention and ask you to share screen in about 15-20 minutes, just uh, playing open open cards and telling uh, what, what we are doing. I have to leave, I have a family meeting. Okay, if, then uh, if, is everyone okay if you talk to Ellison first? Okay, Ellison, would you please share your, uh, let me check if you are the, uh, yeah, your co-host, so please share screen and I'll, I'll quickly look on uh, your um, 
your slides or uh, will, will we discuss your questions? Um, I haven't, I have the information. I just haven't started to put it into a presentation yet. I was just wondering, um, I have one question. So for the, let's see, what is the main? Uh, uh, it, it's better if you share screen and uh, if you have MATLAB open, it will be just quicker and more constructive. For MATLAB or for our presentation? So one cannot do presentation without MATLAB. The goal of your presentations is to share your personal experience of running certain commands and certain scripts. Uh, it is not reproducing general information from online. It is uh, sharing story of your success and failure in uh, practicing MATLAB. Okay. So uh, basically you run several, uh, several commands, make screenshots and show them to everyone. Okay. So I was just looking back on here, I guess. I can share my... Uh, and Alison, I'm, 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 I'm not demanding. I'm just uh, offering and suggesting if you share screen, it will be easier to, 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 to discuss and communicate. Oh yeah, I was just looking back on our lab that we had when we discussed my topic. And I think I'm having a little trouble finding which one that is. Because I know that mine is. So I'm, I'm uh, going to request control over your screen if you okay. just me. Okay, let's see if it works. Or maybe the connection is too slow and it, it doesn't. Yeah, I don't know why it isn't letting you take it. Yeah, I, I think it is quite quite delayed. So it will be. Um... Let me try once again. Give up remote control here. Maybe, maybe another computer will make it more efficient. Request remote control. Request. It might be a setting. Um. No, I think the uh, because we are transferring video, it uh, takes all, all resources of the. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So um, here is. Uh, the suggestion and uh, if you know what to do follow your own procedure i'm uh, giving suggestion only in case uh, you are in doubt so please click on no 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 keep keep oh, uh, keep sharing keep sharing i will just instruct what to do so please click on the command window click on the command window oh i'm sorry click type ls just in case ls enter okay good uh, type who, W H O. So you do not have any variables. Um, define a range of X. You can either type it or copy paste it from the script that you have open. Uh, for example, line five. Um, copy from line from uh, first to line five and paste into your command window. My, 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 oh, sorry. my dogs are going crazy. <laughs> from a dog, then it's natural. If a human being, it will be a little strange. Copy and paste into the command line. Oh, shoot, I missed the. Oh my gosh. Someone's in the Command window. Oh my gosh. Why? Just
Enter. Enter. There we go. Okay. Now type who once again. W H O. Type what? Who? W H O. Type. Okay. Okay. So you have variable X. Now uh, let's type uh, Y. Letter Y equals uh, X point symbol of power, which is shift six uh, two uh, semicolon semicolon uh, yeah enter now type who once again w h o okay you see that in the list of variables you have x and y now yep. let's type plot plot open bracket x comma y Close the bracket and hit enter. Uh, I think you are sharing only one window. It would be more efficient if you stop sharing and then share the whole whole display, so that I can see your um, figure as well. Let's see. Oops. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> uh, it, it still looks like only one window. Can you see this? Oh, oh, okay, yeah, good. Uh, no, yeah. Now let's uh, go to command window once again and uh, uh, do type what open bracket diff. Uh, open bracket. Another. Okay. Y. Close bracket. Close bracket once again. Enter. Now let's look on your uh, figure. So how do you interpret what you see? So we change from uh, the variable of x and then we apply the difference of it um, but can you just speak about it in the language of calculus i'm trying uh, let's see I'm trying to think here we took the derivative of it of it okay, right yeah good now let's do another example let's uh, type y equals sine of x Enter, uh, semicolon, otherwise it will garbage our screen with numbers, Sem semicolon, enter. Now plot in uh, round brackets, y, plot, uh, plot. Um, sorry. Add more onto here. Plot, P-L-O-T, open bracket, open y and close bracket. Enter, and let's look on a screen on the figure. What do you see? We plotted the y factor, so we. You saw sine sine x. Now let's do uh, uh, do arrow up two times. Hit arrow up. No, not oh. symbol of arrow up. Yeah, one once more. Yeah, plot diff y. I'm just lazy for you to type it over. Now hit enter and look on the onto the screen. Do you see any changes? Uh, yeah, we went from the period of it is changing. So would you agree that uh, we converted from sine to cosine? Yeah. Okay. So um, 
you also uh, need to add integration but basically what you did right now you need to document it and show it uh, uh, as a copy pasting from your command line and your uh, window into powerpoint okay that sounds good that makes more sense and, and uh, the reason of what you're doing is that you serve as instructor as a teacher of this skill in case someone in class has forgotten on doesn't know how to interpret this operation you you are not it's not your answer on exam it's more like you're teaching others yep so uh in if if i want to give a grade then i will make a quiz to everyone and based on uh, how everyone performs on uh, this skill i will assign grade to you so how well you taught others make sense yeah sounds good okay so uh do, do you have now a general idea how to prepare yeah i have a way better idea of what okay so I, I will visit with others uh, and if you need you are free to disconnect but um after i visit with everyone else i'll, I'll check if you're still connected and if you have questions feel free to communicate and okay. uh, you can share intermediate version of the um, slides if you want to hear feedback i'll try okay. to operate thank you thank you so uh, now I'm going to visit those uh, who are in the in the class. Uh, Adam, is it okay? You will be the last in the row. Yep, that works. Okay, thank you. Thank you for flexibility. I don't know if this has any value. We can just smile to the to the camera. So it's in rounds, so uh -huh. very basic elements, and then so uh, basically just explaining. So new scripts, um, or if you want to open, or you mm -hmm. can select from the sidebar, and then it'll pop up as like the editor. Mm -hmm. And then so running it, you it's just right there. Click run, but first you have to save it because mm -hmm. it won't save unless it has a title. And then when it does run, you'll have the variables. Uh, in your workspace mm -hmm. that are assigned, and then if you have any uh, like print statements or any outputs, then they'll show up in the command window for anything not suppressed with the uh -huh. semicolon. And then loops. So I'm using some code that I did from a previous class. Uh -huh. And so the first one was the while loop. So this one is just saying, while this statement is true, continue to run some sort of code mm -hmm. afterwards. So this is like. Uh, while we're at a temperature is greater than ambient air temperature, run this until that's false statement and then end. And then so if loops, um, this is this code is taking uh, like a liquid splash point mm -hmm. and assigning it like a class, so like one C flammable or two two combustible. Mm -hmm. And so first thing you input, it'll ask you for the flash point of it. And then you have two if statements, one inside the other to start. And this is saying if the flash point is less than 73, then it asks you for the boiling point, which will go into the inside loop. Mm -hmm. But if it's greater than that, then you have the else if statements, where else if the, if the number is between 73 and 100, then it's, if this is true, then print this. Else if it's between 100 and 140, mm -hmm. then print this. So it goes down into different classes. But if it's uh, less than 73, uh, goes into the inside, and then it just assigns it based off the boiling point. So it's just saying that if this statement's true, run whatever is under it. Else, if it's not true, then do like, the else if statement below it. Mm -hmm. And then for loops, so this code is doing plotting uh, a volume plot based on the radius of the sphere. So first, you have the if statement where if the radius of the sphere is between 100 and 500, then run this equation. But if it's not, that's what the else is. If the statement's false, do something else, which is just stating that the radius is outside of the range. And if the if statement is satisfied, then you run the for loop, which we've talked a little bit mm -hmm. about here. And this is just this is just setting up a, a matrix with 100 mm -hmm. points, and then this is saying for the second position to the end, because you mm -hmm. want to start at zero for the mm -hmm. first position. For the second position to the end, 
do this equation and then assigning obviously there's k in there to do each mm -hmm. thing along the way and then plot it okay. with the height versus the equation okay so um i have several questions okay. and they, they're not about the content it's okay. more about philosophy first okay. first uh would you fit in four minutes how long were you telling it right now? Mm, like five. Okay. Um, then second, um, what is the benefit of your demonstration for this class? It saves a lot of time. To whom? To if you're writing the code. Uh -uh. What is the benefit of your talk to your classmates? How uh, uh, Joe and Josh will benefit from listening to you? What they learn from uh, if, they, if they learn about how to use the loops, mm -hmm. it'll it'll take a lot of time off of if they're having to to use code to solve a problem mm -hmm. instead of uh, writing. So so like for the while loop, mm -hmm. uh, instead of writing this. Time after time, if you just use mm -hmm. the while loop, it'll run as many times as it needs to until the state is full. Okay. Or if, mm -hmm. like the, for the for loop, if you're doing a plot, instead of having to manually put in like every different uh, point along mm -hmm. there, it'll do every index within the matrix. Okay. For every point in the plotter, instead of you doing each of so um, your motivation that you just presented right now would be really good good starting slide if you start like uh, just show empty slide or just maybe summarize what you've told by just a couple of words and then just in the open language introduce what you're going to teach okay. others because um, um, I'm not a good example of a speaker but um, it's it's often during the lecture you fall asleep if the instructor is not interested. Right. So you it's just rule of the game uh, to try to attract attention and offer benefits. Why offer uh, benefit right away? So. Right, right, right. If if they're shopping for your skills, mm -hmm. that they want to pay for it and listen further, right. rather than stop this uh, YouTube clip and go to the next one. Okay. Okay. Now uh, another another thing. Um, Suppose we have three options: mm -hmm. examples from your previous class, mm -hmm. exam e examples from this class, or just very very basic examples that you just type yourself uh, from your inspiration, like a jazz player improvisation. Probably be faster and easier yeah. to understand if it's simple. Okay, so if you already done your nice visualization, I'm I'm not inviting you to redo things, but right. uh, if you have nothing else to do and you want, maybe you'll find shorter path to their hearts right. and, and brains. So um, I think enough okay. of the feedback. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, I like the, the style things are popping up. <laughs> I see you're presenting not the first time in your life. <laughs> okay, thank you. Every time I these vectors aren't seen as the R is it represents the row that can be seen as the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here I have A1, A2, A3, and C4 showing the different like positions as well as the the dots mm -hmm. multiply versus the regular one. And although it appears that A1, A3, and A4 look the same, A2 is a scalar value, and I've heard the Dirac notation comes in. Mm -hmm. And then here I have a, another, well, call another um, vector there, and just showing there just how, like, what happens if you would multiply or right, add the, or multiply like two of the same type of vectors, either a row or a column. And pretty much just only affects the element within that mm -hmm. there, and then here is like just another 
form of writing a row of x pairs, whereas the first number represents the starting value. The second number is premised to increment that increases or decreases the value of the negative number. And then the last number there is the maximum value, and the last number is always less than or equal to that number. Mm -hmm. And then if you try doing the multiplying the same type of bad third rate, if you have dot, then just the element. But if you don't have the dot, then you get this error. Mm -hmm. So um, are you going to show your uh, uh, to play MATLAB uh, uh, during your presentation, or you're going to make screenshots and put them yeah, in the PowerPoint? I'll probably, I'll probably just take screenshots. It, it, it's a really good idea yeah. because uh, there is no guarantee that uh, if you come with your computer that it will connect quickly. If you do it on central podium, there is no uh, guarantee that there will be MATLAB there. So it's better to make screenshots. It will yeah. be much better. So. You, you already have the core of your message, but uh, now it, it's probably time to convert it into PowerPoint slides. Yep. Okay. And uh, feel free to send it uh, earlier than the deadline if you want to hear feedback. I'll, I'll try my best to give priority and then just scratch it with a couple of words yep. back if, if I see chances to improve. All right. Okay, and uh, I'll, I'll make one visit, and then if, if you want to stay here, you can start making your PowerPoint, and then I'll have a glance on it. Yeah, probably didn't have that one. Well, whatever, whatever is uh, comfortable for you. Yeah. But uh, try to make screenshots and yeah. put in PowerPoint, maybe right now. Who knows, maybe you'll be busy yeah. tomorrow. You know, I have all day tomorrow. Okay. Nine, so. Okay, that's good. Honestly, the real adventure was trying to find an example that was actually not too difficult. Mm -hmm. So I have, uh, I'm basically just trying to illustrate like the difference between solving for finding eigenvectors and values in mm -hmm. MATLAB, just doing it by hand. And that took about three slides. And then basically the last slide is just screenshots of the code I took, plus some annotations to, to really to show that the vectors or the eigenvectors are. Uh, okay. So, what do you think of your classmates? How they will take your your message? Um, I'm trying to uh, probably saying a lot more than what's actually on my slides. So I'm gonna try to. But um, when when you're uh going to show slide by slide the way how you how you solve it do you think everyone will follow line by line and uh agree with what, what you're with what you're doing I, I just feel imagine my uh, what i would do if i would be a student in the classroom um i will my brain will do anything to uh stop following it and maybe read uh, emails or uh play music on the on, on the headphone so how are you going to attract attention is it, is it necessary for everyone to follow it and if it is how would you mandate that everyone follows you um i'm i'm not sure really but um, it, it's a rule of, of the game to attract attention yeah um i'm i'm, I'm not going to it's, it's more like a personal uh, choice and also, let's go to the first slide. Uh, do you, uh, did you hear what I, what I was uh, telling to Wyatt? Uh, no, I didn't. So um, why your classmates need to hear to you? So the, the, the rule of the game, the rule of this, um, uh, how to say, goal for these presentations is that uh, you complement Mm, what others missed during the labs. So you refresh their knowledge or you teach them if someone was not coming here. But how you justify that people in the class need to listen to your presentation? Is there any benefit for the class? 
for, for, for going through physical chemistry? Like, what's the motivation for you? Uh, suppose they uh, give likes or, or do not give likes uh, to recording of, of, of your uh, talk, or uh, they listen for first 10 seconds and then they pay to listen further or they stop and do not pay. Like, what, 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 what's your approach to attract attention? Can't say I have one. Uh... So you, you know the material, but this is uh, important, and and it, it is a very big problem for anyone presenting publicly. The audience starts yelling, turning away, reading uh, emails on uh, personal devices. So uh, why I as a student need to listen to this talk? Because I guess in, in that case of eigenvalues, in specific, it's an important part to, uh, uh, it has many uses in, in differential equations, and one of which can include solving systems of differential equations. Okay, better. Oh, oh, uh, so it, it's general. Now you're, you're, you're speaking as um, a representative of your, of your differential equation teacher. Can you uh, represent physical chemistry class? Does the skill is uh, has any value for for the subject that we are studying? What what are examples of a x and lambda in in this course? Like the uh, like the wave function, maybe or mm -hmm. uh, yes okay. yes yes, and this uh, has to be told. Okay. It, it, it's even more important than, than practical skills. Maybe make another slide, first slide motivation. Yeah, I'll write that in my notes. Like. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, did you had um, hydrogen atom orbitals in your freshman chemistry? I believe so. Okay, so is it connected to this equation? I don't know. I don't it, know. it is, it is. So you remember this uh, shapes of orbitals, right? Yeah, it's like a sphere shape. Sphere, then uh, dumbbell, then uh, like clover. Yeah. So those are eigenvectors. Okay. And the energies of these orbitals are eigenvalues. Okay. So if you want to draw clover uh, petals, study this equation <laughs> okay. if you want to understand uh, um, emission of light from distant uh, galaxies study this equation right. <laughs> Another, uh, put another slide, probably maybe like connecting the dots. That's, that's, that's really on. great. That's really great. I appreciate it. Now, an, another uh, constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. um, I really like your approach that you want to compare pen and paper solution and MATLAB solution. It's cool. But what are the criteria of convergence? What is the criterion of Agreeing or disagreement or disagreement between these two solutions. Like they have, like, like they have to like actually like be equal, or I'm not sure I follow. Yes, exactly. Okay. So by solving this, uh, you, you select a problem, you select a matrix, and find it its eigenvalues first by pen and paper, second by MATLAB, and you expect to get the same solutions. Yeah. How do I know that it is your plan? You probably are going to say it by, by words, but maybe one can put a slide and, and, and another little note. The smaller the amount of information, the bigger the font, the better, the more the happier is the audience. Okay. Like, uh, I'm not a good example of, of good presentations, but ideally it's like four words or four lines with really huge fonts. No, no white, like uh, another, another slide. Uh, declare what, what you're going to do. I want to offer 
pen and paper and MATLAB and prove that they give the same answer. Look at me. Uh, it, it's basic information, but it prepares minds of your audience to what you because otherwise, especially, I, I don't know, maybe if you will be in a rush, you show slides, no one reads them. And, and then uh, if we, I'm, I'm not going to do the following, but if we do a quiz of how people learned anything from here and uh, asking them to try repeat, they will show zero memories. Okay. And it is not, uh, then, then uh, it's like, efficiency of the talk was not not ideal okay so it's better maybe to show less information but uh approach the hearts and brains of your audience sure so like maybe just kind of just give a matrix and then just kind of jump straight to the to the answers or well um one cannot do much in uh four minutes but you can play with uh, audience to like who can solve this equipment i show only a matrix who can tell what are the eigenvalues can you solve it in your mind and give pause then uh, uh, someone either solves it or everyone feels sorry for not being able to solve it okay. but you attract attention and then you quickly uh, after this pause you show i do characteristic equations and find eigenvalues and maybe right after, maybe you, you do everything pen and paper and everything by MATLAB, but maybe right after here, pop, pop ups MATLAB and you get the same answer. Okay, so yeah. MATLAB is my best helper. And then at least this portion uh, will be settled in their minds. Sure. So uh, this is possible to, to digest. And then uh, uh, when you go to eigen vectors, maybe they will take it, maybe they will already fall asleep or you'll celebrate that they understood this slide but uh, it will be something okay so you're already performing really well but i'm just yeah tr 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 trying to give some suggestions yeah i see it okay a any any questions from your side no okay yeah thank you and for um your i am just putting Adam? Hello. Oh, you are a co-host. You can share your screen. Okay. One sec. Yeah. Okay. Can you see it? Oh, yes. Uh, All right. Nice orange color. <laughs> hey, thank you. It's my favorite. Okay. It means you're a happy person. Orange <laughs> uh, symbol of happiness. We're excited for Halloween. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, like I did all the, I did some calculations in MATLAB or some of like these actual mm -hmm. examples that I'm going to put in here. Um, mm -hmm. So just imagine um, examples where it says, for example, or uh, uh, where there are semi or colons. So do you have MATLAB on your uh, equipment right now? I do, yes. Can you open it and make some demonstration? And uh, generally, it's it's better to share not one window but the whole uh, display. Oh, okay, okay. You don't have any secret uh, images. It's <laughs> more more comfortable. I do not. No. Jump between between uh, uh, windows. All right. 
make sure. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay, okay. that's good. There's a... Okay. Yes. So uh, um, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read your minds. Maybe if you copy paste the text from here and paste it into your PowerPoint, it uh, gets corrupted formatting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, I'm going to use like a snipping tool. Yes. Uh, just to take little pictures. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So please uh, go ahead and uh, bef uh, before doing it, please guide me through your uh, like like workspace. No, no. Here in MATLAB, show me oh. what you did and what what is most interesting. Okay. So this was just a, a test. <laughs> this was just uh, to kind of uh, demonstrate, or I mean, show myself. Uh, how semicolons are are essentially row breaks uh, mm -hmm. when making a matrix. Uh, this this uh, uh, was me making a little two by three matrix uh, using I guess the same methodology, um, and then of course a, a four by two or a two by four. Um, uh, similarly, uh, uh, so I, I I made this matrix up here, um, and then I uh, I'm going to show that you can also make it uh, using this method. Uh, instead of uh, the commas and semicolons to separate the values using just spaces and and uh, hitting return, um, uh, this uh, I'm going to use uh, for the uh, determinant. Oh no, this I'm going to use for the uh, uh, I think the transpose. Mm -hmm. This I'm going to use for the uh, I'm going to show this for the determinant, um, and then this. Um, um, yeah, this just as well. I'm going to. Uh, kind of used to show how, um, I mean, uh, by hand you can find this, but uh, using MATLAB, it's much easier to find the return of something like this. Um, okay, so I have a couple of questions. Yeah. So, um, what is the benefit of your lecture to your classmates? Um, well, honestly, uh, dealing with uh, matrices. Uh, <laughs> Especially very large ones. Uh, basically, anything past four by four is uh, a no go to calculate the uh, something like the determinant or uh, the inverse by hand. It's yes, uh, but what what is the necessity to use matrices in physical chemistry? Like, why uh, they are needed for this specific course? Is there any benefit of using matrices and what they will represent? How they uh, relate to molecules and uh, chemical reactions and spectra? Um, I mean, I, I, I can think about uh, how vectors apply uh, specifically, but uh, maybe not a uh, matrix um, uh, off the top of my head. I'm not sure. So uh, please make a note and try to meditate on, on this subject and uh, try to find your own answer. So relation of the matrices and vectors to PCAM course. Okay. So um, do you have uh, lecture notes on your screen or on your computer? Uh, lecture notes, yeah. Can you uh, open uh, the one, just open something, maybe not, not this one, but a couple of lectures ago when we went over um, time independent Schrodinger equation. Uh, Let's, let, let's look. My, let's go through slides and check if it will be appropriate. Keep going. Keep going. No, no. Keep keep going forward. Okay. 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 And now oh. let's stop somewhere here. So. Um, maybe oh. Okay. Yeah, now tell what do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why this escaped my mind. Uh, no, yes, uh, I, I, I definitely, I definitely knew this. I don't, I don't know why I forgot. So just try to translate your idea into the language. Just try to speak it up. Although I, I see that you understand it, but uh, it's another process to convert mind into words. Please try to say uh, by your own words, what is the connection of matrices to the physical chemistry? So uh, a lot of like operators and stuff, um, uh, they 
are multiplied or uh, they, they are, they are uh, uh, the, the way that they act uh, like a quantum equation is very similar to a matrix if they're not a matrix themselves uh, themselves. Um, okay, so this, like this. Those, those are golden words, exactly mm -hmm. as, as you explained. Mm -hmm. So uh, and I suggest you should make an extra slide at the very beginning of your talk as a motivation. And okay. this works exactly as you told, literally as a slide, motivationally. I am going to show you how to work with matrices in MATLAB because without them, we cannot survive in this course. <laughs> and then tell you tell your words like connection between matrices and operators. Sure, yeah. And uh, the uh, criterion of the success of your talk is not. Um, I, I already know what you guys know and what you do do not know. I see it from talking to you and from homework. It's more important how you help classmates because uh, we all do the same thing, but. Uh, you guys are busy and maybe some details are skipped from their minds and you are refreshing their minds and help to uh, tune their skills to work with matrices. Make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you plan to include visualization of matrices into your talk? I do, yeah. It was on the... It was on okay, the let's go to your MATLAB. Let's go to your MATLAB and, and uh, can you visualize like this P matrix or whatever? Uh, I'm not sure how I was in the, uh -huh. I, was, I, I was in the, I was in the <laughs> middle of, uh, I was in the middle of doing uh, my necessary research. Uh, that, that's fine. So you see how your classmates will feel. They have basic idea, but they may miss some exact commands. So please type bar, B-A-R three, bar three. And then break open bracket p close bracket like that yeah and uh, i uh, let's see what what you oh here we go so the larger the value the higher the bar right mm -hmm. so and uh, you can do a couple of of these examples to the matrices that we are doing it's it's very basic command but it, it will bring colors to the world of your talk okay uh, you, you, you just want this basically. So um, we are doing a, a little show. Like if we publish your talk as a standalone YouTube, we want to fight for maximum number of likes to make it entertaining. Sure. So if you just show boring matrices, most of the world audience will probably skip it on the first second. <laughs> If you show uh, spectacular uh, figures, pictures, and animations, you can get more views and more likes. Yeah. Okay. So would you would you recommend maybe uh, putting this uh, on one of the first slides to kind of? Uh... Yes, absolutely, absolutely. This is a great idea. Okay. Okay. We can do that. You can even make a screenshot right as, as we speak. Okay. Yeah. Who knows, maybe after we stop uh, talking, you will be busy with other things. Sure. And uh, you know, in, uh, yeah, copy figure is one way. And another way in, uh, yeah, let's go. Okay, yeah, it works. I might have to, pretty it up a little bit <laughs> maybe maybe crop it slightly yeah you, you know in powerpoint there is a way like insert uh insert oh insert. Here, uh, screenshot let's look picture screenshot and then screen clipping screen clipping and then uh select the area uh -huh. you want here we go Try that again. Hold on. I'm gonna try to get under there. And click. Click here. Okay. I'll I'll get a better one.
slightly better. Okay. And also there. for your for your texts for your for your uh, MATLAB commands, you can also do the screen screen clipping. Which yeah. you, as, otherwise, if you copy paste text, it make it corrupts formatting and it looks ugly. Right. Yeah. But it's so. Um, what's your last slide? Can you please show it to me? Uh, what's pre second last? Matrix exponentials in MATLAB. Yeah, we we, dis we need to discuss it, but second last should be conclusions generally. Oh, okay, okay. Summarize what uh, audience have learned uh, from you. And uh, you, you decide yourself after after you are done, you summarize what, what, what you did. Okay. okay, let's go to your MATLAB. Yes. And uh, type exp. Uh, not not M, pro, uh, simply exp bracket p close bracket. Now type mm -hmm. expm uh, bracket p bracket. So mm -hmm. please tell me, are they different or or, or equal? I'm quite different, yeah. Why? Uh, well, this is a, a different operation. Than... But what what's the difference? It's, it's, they both are exponentials. Um uh is is hmm. this okay this uh, the, this first one would just be um like e to the power of each value uh -huh. inside the matrix uh but the second one is e to the power of the entire matrix okay? exactly exactly yes. yes yes yeah okay and uh um the exponential is um, a um, Taylor series, right? Yes, yeah, I, I did plus a little one bit. One plus X plus X square over two. So basically EXPM is uh, one plus matrix plus matrix uh, multiplied by itself divided by two. So it's in, in power series. And it is quite different from um, uh, element by element uh, exponential. So this EXPM, operation oh I, I better ask you which part of our lectures does is, is it related to um um okay uh when uh, uh, specifically when the um oh god in some in some equations there are uh uh there's e uh raised to the power of uh, some uh operator or uh or or uh, okay. matrix okay so let's open lecture maybe number seven if it is wrong uh, uh, I'll, I'll navigate yeah seven yeah seven lecture se yeah preparing lecture seven okay oh no it was your presentations maybe uh, yeah. one before or one after Let's see six. Six or, or eight, yeah. Let's see six. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Keep, keep scrolling. Yeah, we have some, some examples, but let's keep scrolling. Okay. Okay, that's good. It's not it's not bad, but uh, we have uh, we have something better. Let's let's go one lecture before. Maybe if this one's uh, five, let's go maybe number four. Uh, preparing preparing.
Here we are. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what is the, yeah? What 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 is yellow box? Uh, <laughs> What's the, the, the yellow? Uh -huh. uh, this. Um, does it describe the energy or no? No, no. It's a time evolution operator. Exactly, time evolution. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. evolution operator. So yeah. this evolution operator has this uh, exponential with. Uh, Hamiltonian in in its power. Yeah. The Hamiltonian can uh, frequently be a matrix. So this EXPM will be used wildly through the rest of the course. Mm -hmm. So it is, uh, you can even show this screenshot and uh, as a motivation for, as another motivation for your, for your presentation, just copy this slide and tell like, who, uh, make a little quiz for everyone, just name the yellow box. And then people will either answer you, which will be pleasant, or they feel sorry of not able to answer. And then sure. they establish connection with the audience and they will be listening to you with more uh, attention. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, everyone remembers it, but maybe not everyone is able to uh, memorize the exact name of, of the object. But yeah. you will serve well to the to all your classmates and uh, the course by bringing this to everyone's attention. So it's 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 really good thing if you, if you show it and make make a micro quiz like who knows what is yellow box. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I think you you are progressing really well. Okay. Uh, do you have the question uh, questions generated by yourself? Because I, I think I'm I'm talking too much. Maybe you wanted to ask something. I think you actually answered them all. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank just you. just by asking me questions, I think that helped a lot. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the credit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, let, let me know if I can be helpful, and you can, uh, if you if you want, you can share preliminary version before the deadline. Uh, if you want to hear more feedback, or just send whatever is ready by Thursday night. Sure, yeah, I can send it your way. Okay. Anything to discuss right now? Uh, no. Okay, then uh, I suggest we finish, we complete the session. And uh, I think you are the most dedicated physical chemist of the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> okay. Definitely a first for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, then uh, let's disconnect and uh, uh, announce that journey. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Adam.